We start, Dennis, by just reminding ourselves of what the review and development cycle is meant to be about. Um, I think that it's really about formalising a little something that all teachers do, which is thinking about their work, how they can improve it, and how they're going to develop in it. Um, so really it's about giving positive feedback, mm -hmm. helping with the self-review, and maybe stating quite clearly what your own objectives and targets are and helping work towards yes. them. Yes. Uh, and to do that, there is a cycle of meetings and observations which we'll both be involved in. Mm. Today I hope that we're going to be able to agree what the programme is going to be. It should be quite easy. You, you've got some ideas already, have you? One or two, yes. Good. So we're going to try and agree between ourselves yep. what information we'd both like to bring to the review discussion and which people we'd both like to consult about that. Um, agree when the first lesson observation is going to be and that will mm -hmm. be the general focus observation. Yes. Are you happy about oh, yes, the idea yes. behind that? Mm -hmm. That it's just taking a look-see yeah. and from yeah. that we might work towards specific areas that you'd like to think about. Mm -hmm. And if we can today, I'd also like to put a date for the review discussion, which will be in two, maybe yes. three weeks' time. Right. Are you happy with yep. all that? Yep. This is the self-review preparation form. Yes. I'm sure you've seen this before, if you've yeah. seen the um, handbook. Mm. The first part is just going to include details of your own experience so far, mm. uh, a curriculum vitae, if you like. And that I would like you to give back to me before the review discussion. Yes. That will be on record as just an account of your, your but experience. The head already has such information, or is yes. this just a question of updating? Yes, it is a question of updating and making sure that things like in service training, which you've attended, yeah. it doesn't slip through the net, you know, is put on record right. and is there on your file. And the second part uh, is perhaps more thoughtful in that you're asked to consider a number of areas of your own work, those you've been happy with, yeah. those you would perhaps like to talk about with a view to developing or reviewing. Mm -hmm. And this is your own, your own self-review. It would be very helpful yeah. to me to have a copy um, some time before And will you review. retain that to, um, second copy which I write or is that destroyed afterwards? I mean, my hopes and aspirations obviously will go on record, but I mean that particular piece of paper, will that be retained? No, it won't. The only thing that will go on your record, that will stay in your file from this whole cycle, mm -hmm. will be the um, details, the updated details of courses with, with attended courses, yeah. and the agreed statement which we will come out with in the end. So any other paperwork, such mm -hmm. as lesson observation um, and the summary of lesson observation, is your property yes. and won't be placed on file at all. So it's just the two documents will go that's, into the file at the right. end and right. I have to agree on both of them. Well, the one I will have written myself, but the other one, the agreed statement, won't contain anything I don't wish it to contain. If there are points of disagreement, then on that document will be both our points of view. Right. So there will okay. be nothing on there that you feel strongly ought not to be on there without your statement to that To effect. the contrary. But yeah. I don't envisage that happening because I'm, I'm hoping that the whole thing will be one that we'll work on yes. together. Right. And what we really need to agree now is what information you feel I ought to have about yourself. From other people? Yes, or <coughs> written sources. Um, mm. Anything that you... Anything that you feel will be helpful in giving me a more three-dimensional picture of yourself as a teacher? Right. Um, well, I think they're all... I mean, I'm quite happy for you to interview or to ask as many people as you like. Mm. Um, I suppose that it would be a good idea if you asked, first of all, or not in any particular rank order, but asked the deputy head, mm -hmm. because I have quite a lot of dealings with him. Would that be Ian? With Ian, yes. Mm -hmm. And, if you wish, the headmaster. Um, but also I feel that it would be a good idea if you spoke to people within my department, because I, I, I think I can tell you things, or profess to do things, 
which people in my department might say I don't do. And I think it would be a good idea if you had a word with them, because they see me probably in a different light from the one which uh, mm. Ian sees me in. If you're happy with that, I would be quite willing to talk with somebody in yes. the department. Liz would seem ideal as your second yes, in yes. department. But uh, you, what I will be asking won't be in the spirit of criticism. No, but what well, I want uh, to find out is... Um, well, if it's going to be in any way developmental, then surely if she has some observations which are critical, then they should come forward. And you're happy about that? Well, yes. That's fine. Um, and as a form tutor, I suppose you should have a word with the year head. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much time you have for information collecting, but uh, I, think, I mean, uh, as many people as you like. I don't. I personally don't mind. As far as the lesson observation goes, the notes that you will get, my summary of what mm -hmm. I've seen, will be on these sorts of sheets. And as you can see, there isn't a very clear format. No. Just details of time and place and yourself mm -hmm. and the class. And I'm hoping on there just to put down what I see happening. Mm -hmm. um, that I will just record what I believe is actually happening in the class and that that will be a stimulus for the following discussion. Mm -hmm. Because for each of these observations we will be getting together for a few minutes beforehand yes. so I know what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. And then within 48 hours afterwards to talk through what we actually saw, uh, what you thought about it, what I thought about it, and come up with an agreed summary. Mm -hmm. And that will be one more of the pieces of information that we'll bring with us to the review right. discussion. Yeah. And both sets of notes for the <coughs> excuse me, general focus and the specific focus are very much the same. Essentially a blank sheet for us to bring to it right. what we want. Could I ask, have you, have you any information about how you're going to um, how a look at the actual lesson. I mean, just to sit there and watch it, the lesson is one thing, but to sit and have a number of um, sort of prompts of what to look at. Will you have that sort of information? Yes. If you've had a look at the um, handbook, mm. Pilot Light, you will have noticed mm. that there are areas for consideration mm. mapped out. Mm. I personally would find it very hard to go into a lesson with a checklist. What I'm hoping to do is to go in having refreshed my memory about yeah. them, to look at what is going on and record it, and then coming away and rewriting my notes, bearing those in mind. Right. Now that would be for the general focus mm -hmm. observation. For the specific focus observation, we will agree between us what particular aspects you feel we ought to focus on, and it will be with that particularly in mind that I'll go into the lesson. Right. We will then come to the review discussion with a great deal of material. There'll be your self-review, mm. which you will certainly have and which I hope I will have, the information that we've both gathered, and the classroom observation. But what we've now got to agree between is some dates. Um, I hope you've got your diary with yes. you. Yes. This is the hard bit, isn't it, putting <laughs> things into the day? Well, I mean... I think that it is an opportunity when a teacher can take time to look at his or her own life. Too much of teaching is done in a hurry. Everything is urgent. I get really annoyed at meetings when we spend so much time dealing with urgent matters and other things of a more philosophical nature or we'll leave that because we've something which is important, which has to be done. So here is an occasion for a teacher to sit down with a sort of a prompt list and think about what he or she does and how he or she performs. And so I looked upon this as an opportunity for me to sit down, for me to think about what I do, why I do it, and where I'm going. So when I sat down with the actual prompt list and looked at it and read it through, I began to think of ways in which I perform my duties. As a head of a department, I believe that uh, I should not be out there charging on ahead, hoping that the rest of the troops will follow. But I try to run the department in such a way that we all make progress together. 
Um, I hate the idea of being a dictatorial head of department. I have quite a few departmental meetings, plus the fact that we, because of the stockroom where it is, it's quite a large one and people tend to work in it, that we meet there quite a lot informally. And so I feel that a lot of the ideas um, which come, some come from me, the shower system, but I think it's also important that we get ideas from members of the department of things that we should do. But also, obviously, I've got to have ideas myself. I don't think that any head of department should ever stand still and say, right, the department's running smoothly, um, let's just keep it like that. I think there has to be change, that there must be change for one's own self-fulfillment as much as anything. I also have to talk with uh, feeder schools, with the, uh, we are an 11 to 16 school, so I'm in contact with the college next door. Now, I, unfortunately, I know that I don't do as much in that line as I should. I mean, this particular form has made me realise that. Um, and it's something I shall have to confess to, that I, I just don't get out. It's a question of time, but if it's in my job specification, I'm failing in that respect. So maybe I should renegotiate the job specification. <laughs> um, and there are channels for me to renegotiate. But of course, over and above being a manager, I am of course a teacher. And so I'm looking to the whole process of development um, in a way that will help me to develop as a teacher. Although I've been doing uh, work in the classroom now for what sometimes seems like 300 years, I still feel that I, there's room to improve. When I started, um, I was required to teach clause analysis and parsing and Pupils sat in serried ranks, so I've seen quite a change in teaching over the years. And I've arrived at a stage now where I enjoy it immensely. Uh, I think I enjoy teaching more now than I've ever enjoyed it in my life. I think the whole emphasis in teaching has altered so much. I enjoy child-centred learning. Um, but I think I, there's still room to improve. For example, one of the things I will be asking Monica to look at will be whether or not I talk too much. Um, he asked me to speak with five people and I must admit this is the part of the review and development cycle that I found most problematic, most puzzling for myself. I think there's a great weight of responsibility when going to talk to third parties um, because it, what it is you're asking them has to be so clear to yourself and made so evident to them that there's no misunderstanding. I think there are two dangers. You could go along and just elicit the opinion that Dennis is a good bloke, which is very nice for him, but professionally not very useful. Or you could offer it as uh, an opportunity to criticise, to carp, which is entirely unhelpful and not at all what we want. So I think the question has to be put to them in such a way that they know they're being asked to give supportive information. Now, not just supportive to Dennis in the sense of non-critical, but supportive to the review and development programme, so that what comes will help Dennis and myself see more clearly what it has, he's been doing in the school and how it can be developed so that I can recognise positive achievements of his. Uh, at first I wondered why it was I was going to see these other people because it seemed to me, well, Dennis could tell me himself what he's done in his department. But in fact, in talking to them, aspects of his work have come out that I don't think Dennis would himself perhaps have focused on and that extra perspective has been very useful for me to see how he is working as a teacher, what it is he's doing. And in fact, one or two interesting ideas that we might discuss when we get to the review discussion have come out. And you must remember I'm not an English specialist, for example, and that talking with people who are, and Ian, our deputy head, who has been head of an English department, obviously has that expertise, and Liz, Dennis is second in department has as well. So that raises my awareness of the issues involved. So I do feel that something quite valuable 
has come out of this information collecting process. And so far, I've seen three of the people. I have still to speak with the head. Uh, and it will be interesting to see what he has to say about cross-curricular issues, because at present, I think that's something that teachers in secondary schools are generally struggling with, um, in the sense that they are structured departmentally. And anything that is cross-curricular is very hard to fit into the existing structure and I think requires a very imaginative and creative approach as well as a lot of hard work. So besides that information that I, I have um, from Dennis's head of year about his pastoral work, um, from Ian about his role as head of department and how that fits into the school generally, and from Liz about how the department itself is going, I've also got, of course, his job description, which is a very important piece of information, and uh, a description of his role as form tutor. So there is going to be, if anything, almost more than we need for a two-hour discussion, because remember, in addition to this, there will be the classroom observation and Dennis's own self-review. It's made easier by the fact that everybody in the school knows what's going on because everybody has been to uh, one in-service training day, that for the reviewees. Everybody's had a copy of the handbook. So they are not starting from nowhere. They have some idea what the process is about, and they are themselves all going to be reviewed. And I think that's important because they can empathise with the person who is being reviewed by me. So almost always I've started by saying, I've come to you for information, but I don't want opinion. I want supportive information that's going to give me a clearer idea of what Dennis has been doing in the particular area of work that you are concerned with. And for instance, if we think about uh, Liz, his second in department, uh, the particular question I wanted to ask was, how's the department run? Uh, how much delegation is there? What jobs have you had to do that you feel have been developmental for you personally? Can you think of anything more that might be useful for the department that perhaps hasn't happened yet and that might be put to Dennis? And the interesting thing is that within the English department there has been, for some years, on a voluntary basis, an annual review and development programme so that Liz was more aware than most of what it means. And yet, even though she's had an opportunity to speak with Dennis on a one-to-one -one basis, there came out of our discussion together at least one idea that I might introduce to Dennis. Um, with his head of year, I got an idea about how he's contributed as a fourth-year tutor to the fourth year generally, and what style he has with his tutor group. And from Ian, as I say, um, an idea of how he's contributed to the whole school as a head of department. Um, if you remember, last time we met, we agreed what the specific focus for this mm -hmm. lesson tomorrow was going to be. Now, I've got written down here that you were interested in continuing with looking at group work. Yes and that what you were particularly concerned about was how you interact with the groups of children. Yes. And whether you are actually interfering with their efforts to put their thoughts into words, mm -hmm. or whether you're being constructive. Yes. Um, I think the thing is that um, what I want to do is to give them enough information to be able to carry on with the work, but not give them so much that there's nothing left for them to do. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like you to have a look at just how I perform, mm -hmm. um, whether or not I give them too much, not enough, or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, it's the same fourth year group, isn't it? Yes. yes. Now, I know that they've had a couple more lessons since I last yes, saw them. Yes. So would you like to put me in the picture about where they are now? Well, actually, we're going to start something completely new. We will be having a look at the way in which people are punished. So you're hoping to stimulate them into expressing their own ideas at this stage yes, yes. about punishment? Briefly, I'm going to give them a number of offences, well, 
stories of a number mm. of offences and then they have to give the punishment which they feel should mm. be given. Then I shall give them a list with all the punishments on them and they've got to match the punishments to the crime and then make the punishments fit the crime, yes. And then later on I shall show them just how they were matched up in reality. They are real uh, cases. Mm. Well, there's a simple matter of organisation. What would you like me to do? Would you like me to be there before they arrive or to come in with you? Well, I think really the same as last time, that you should... Uh, I mean, they know what you're doing. Mm. Um, they know the idea behind it. Mm. And so if you just come in, you can sit where you like, move around as you mm. like. I would like to move from group to group, yeah. but I, I don't feel I want to join in with the discussion, no, no. just to hear what it is the children well, are saying to each other. yes, I mean... I find at times it's difficult to keep out of a discussion. It's difficult to know how to judge, that, which is what I want you to look at. I mean, do I do it too much? Mm. Um, you know, one is so tempted at times to say, oh my God, you're wrong, you're wrong. But um, if they are factually wrong, I think you should. But if it's a matter of opinion, at times that's a little bit difficult. It's an interesting issue, isn't it? Yes, mm. yes. Mm. Well, I look forward In to it. In the old days, I would have said it. <laughs> yes. in this lesson or if you were late those of you who are in my tutor group if you were late what do you think I would do press ups that's right it's my little form of punishment if you were to go out with your uh, friends one night a mum and dad said right now I want you to get her home by 10 right along those dark lanes along the Poldens you've got to be in by 10 you see and you arrive home at 12? What do you think they'd say? <laughs> would they? They wouldn't repeat it, no. Um, but there would be punishment, probably, wouldn't there? Yes? What I want us to look at today is punishment, but not for little things like being late for school or late for my lesson, but look at punishment for other things little things that happen that actually get to court and what I'm going to do to you not to you uh, is give you one or two cases and I want you to decide what sort of punishment they should receive but first of all let's talk about punishment what sort of punishments can a court give let's have write them down on the board I don't know why that's there we'll take that off um, Right. What sort of punishments can a court give? Anybody give me an example? Yes. A fine. Right. We'll put that down. Fine. Prison. Pr pr prison. Right. Anybody else? Probation. Probation. Right. What else? Community service. I wonder if you all understand what community service is. Do you? What is community service? Somebody explain it. Jason. It's where you go and work for the people that you've offended or work in the community. Yes, I don't know if they would actually... I'm not sure. You might be required to work. going to do is give you a sheet which lists them all and in fact explains them. I don't want you to go into it in too much detail. This is purely for your reference. Okay? Because then I'm going to give you another sheet. And this sheet gives you 12 little crimes that have been committed. And I want you to decide, and it lists at the bottom incidentally, so that you don't get sort of bogged down in all of these. This is an explanatory sheet. I saw... Uh, PC Horsefall, and he explained it all to me, because I wasn't... Re I, I must admit, I learned something. So this is an explanatory sheet that he and I devised. Um, and then you're not going to use all of those, but by all means read them. You just use the ones which are at the bottom of the sheet here. There are 12 crimes, and in your group, you've got to decide what punishment fits the crime.
This girl, though, that's found guilty of obstructing the police, would that only be a fine? Yeah. Yeah. They, they don't you take hear about it. You hear about it on the news, don't they? Just get fined. Yeah. The things, uh, wouldn't have thought they got. Yeah, they only get done with they assault police officers, don't they? Yeah. Could you read it out to me? I'm not really sure what. 17 year old boy kicked a white cat that was sleeping on the pavement 15 to 20 feet in the air. The height was estimated by three witnesses. In court, he said he mistook the cat for a paper bag. Yeah. But you could have, you'd have to use a lot of force, though, wouldn't you, to get a it's cat into the air that far? Foot. And if you wouldn't just kick a bag like that, though, would you? I don't know. Do you kick leaves around? Yeah, when they're falling? Yeah, the oh, no, it's, it's, it's yeah. the weight of the thing. I mean, yeah. I... Mr. Kate did some force, didn't he? Yeah. You, you might have been in a bad mood and just sort of... Took it out the, the bag, cat, and he, you know, he thought it was a bag and taken it out of the bag, and, <laughs> and it ended up being a cat. <laughs> no, mm. I don't. And it could be. I mean, because if, if you don't have to kick something like that too hard to get it quite high in there. Mm. Yeah, 15 to 20 feet isn't that high road, is it? Pardon? <laughs> I mean, this. I'm six and a half feet. Yeah, I mean, this room's probably about 20 feet high, isn't it? Is it? No. Well, no. Higher? I'm sure, sir. A bit higher than me. Mm. I'm two metres. Twenty feet, we're talking about seven metres, aren't we? Well, under seven metres, but between six and seven metres. Well, you've got to decide. Yeah. You're the judges, right? Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Can you... If he's 17, yes. can you choose between detention and Borstal? Um, yes, you can really. Uh, even the policeman wasn't quite sure on this. I, I mean, I, because I asked him about it. Yeah. And there is that overlap. 17 uh, can go to either. But I think Borstal is more severe yeah. than the detention centre. Yeah. yeah. Huh? So it's probably a detention centre would be probably better for him. If you yeah. decide it. Yeah. I'd like to know what it really was. Yeah. <laughs> give, give him detention. So. You're going to, be, going to give him detention, are you? You've got to pay for all this to be put back, haven't they? Yeah. So, so who's going to pay? Sure. The parents have got to pay. Twice They've got to get about 400 pounds. <laughs> Twice, though. I said five pounds. <laughs> I've now got a sheet here on which I have the various um, punishments which were given. You will see that, for example, that one has been... Uh, I've cut a little bit out of it. That was the giveaway bit. There is one which is very obvious, which rather foolishly I, I didn't spot until I'd done this out. There is one which is a giveaway because they, uh, they mention actually what the crime was. But I've tried to cut out all reference to the crime. So, um, with one exception, now, what I'd like you to do is, against the numbers, I see that you've all put numbers 1 to 12 down the side, I want you to put the letter which is on here, okay? Which you think fits that particular crime. Why would he be fined? I thought, what did we put it for? Then? Why would he be fined? Number three. Maybe carrying a weapon. We put forceful there. I mean, and fine, so yeah. maybe it is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What's F for? I was brought to training for six months. What, and you think that's number three? No. It's going to be worse than that, I think. Change that. Okay. So I, I think that's going to be... What do you think it's going to be? It's going to be... Where's it gone? Those two little boys. Because there's nothing there's down There's nothing, yeah. There's nothing. Either you can find the parents or put them into care, isn't it? Yeah. Could I just refer you look, to the note at the bottom of the mention? Children under 10 are deemed below the age of women on responsibility. Can, yeah, it's still desirable to be placed in care of local authority. Yeah, but you haven't got it written down here, though. So what happened to them? Could their parents, could their parents be fined? Could they? No. Well, they obviously no action, then. No action. Really? Well, look, read that note again, you see. Read it out loud. Children under 10 are deemed 
to be below the age of criminal responsibility. So they're not criminals. And they're not. What's the, the word? Other than that one's number six. Other than the one that took seven times. Free, responsible. Responsible for it. Responsible. Yeah. No action. That's really amazing. Well, no, 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 no
Now that's something which you've observed, which I personally haven't observed, which I can't really observe. Yes. Um, which I find very interesting, yes. you know, that um, you are, seem to be suggesting that the conversation is better when I am present than when I'm with, an, uh, if I'm with a group, they, they work harder. It seemed to me, listening to the groups, that there is definitely um, a different form of language when you're there, uh, a more public form where they struggle to put their thoughts very coherently for you to understand. <laughs> but I was trying hard to listen at the same time to the conversation of groups where you were not. Yes. And also what was going on when, I'm when you were there. Yeah. One thing I was very conscious of, uh, or it seemed to me, that you were trying hard not to steamroll people into your opinions. Mm. Oh, yes. Mm. Which is, I think I've... Mm, I've tr made a conscious effort about that. I mean, it, as I've said before to you, that teaching has changed so radically. Uh, and I think a matter of, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago, I would have come in and said, well, you know, the, why don't you? And given my opinion. And I, th I think it's something that I've consciously tried not to do, mm. is to give my opinion. just by going over what the purpose of this discussion is. And there's a lot to feed back to you, things I've found out, information that I've got. Um, yes. And I'm hoping that a lot of that will be supportive to you in reviewing what you've done over the past year. Yes. But we've got to do rather more than that. We've also got to try and identify, if we can, what your developmental needs are going to be in the future, and to be very specific about some targets. Right. Now, I think uh, that's an area that we've got to be realistic about. I think we mustn't overload. We must think clearly about what's, what's achievable. And yes, there's no point in setting targets unless we can achieve no, them. No, absolutely. Well, so I'll just give absolutely. up. Absolutely. And out of it will come an agreed statement. And the first thing is uh, simply the job description. Yes. Uh, well, of course, I've had a look at it. Um, I think there is one area which, um, if we look, have you got my job description? Yes, I got it. Right, too. it's seven two. If I can just find it uh, because I've had a good look through it, and I'm quite happy with almost all of it. Mm. Um, it's just seven two that um, mm. it says effective liaison in the sh subjects is maintained with feeder and post sixteen schools colleges with those responsible for careers education and where appropriate with local industry and LEA advisors. Yes. Now, I go along with the advisors, the local industry, um, because we do have liaison in the English department. I mean, we make use of people in industry. Uh, they come in and give talks on various aspects to do with English, actually. And, but it's when it's with feeder and post-16 schools, because I'm, <coughs> maybe I'm, uh, prejudging or preempting what's going to happen, but you see that is an area where I feel I don't I don't do anything really. This review and development has made me look at my job description, mm. which is something I haven't done for a long, long time. <laughs> and therefore I've been brought up with a little bit of a yes. job, you see. So just before we move on to the next section, yeah. um, what you've told me is that the job description as it stands seems to you a fair document, yeah. Um, yeah. but that as far as this particular aspect, liaison with feeder schools and post-16 institutions go, you feel mm. that there yes, is a I gap Yes, I mean, there. as the document, I mean, whether or not I was, I mean, uh, I think there is an area, for example, where I don't, again, um, fulfil my duties properly. Right. And do you want to take that now or later? Because I reckon you're going to bring it up and I'm trying to be <laughs> head you off. <laughs> Whichever you prefer, Dennis. Well, let's take six. 6E. Maintaining efficient and effective control and disbursement of the department's capitation and I... try and tell me you're not going to... No, I really, I really hadn't thought of that as something really? that central. Oh. Um, you feel that this is something you haven't done? Well, um, yes, I have done it, but I mean, it's something of a joke that I always overspend. Mm. I mean, a joke in the staff room, you know, if anybody overspends, I do. Do you think that's true? 
that I do overspend. Mm. Oh, yes, I do. I think what has to be considered, uh, in all seriousness, is that this year there is a situation where departments are going to be asked to uh, budget very strictly because yes. of the, the, the de effective decreases. So I, not so much in terms of your department, but in terms of the whole school, I really think it is worth giving thought <coughs> to keeping the books straight. It helps. I'm lucky in that I have a department of uh, very dedicated teachers mm. of English mm. and we seem to work very well as a group and I think that that's something that I, I, I take a great deal of ple pleasure in that um, as a department there is a great deal of cohesion, there's a great deal of, of help one to yes. the other. Yeah. Perhaps you'd like to, to know what um Ian uh, had actually got to say about you and your input as head of department because yeah. you you're obviously seeing it very much from the point of view of head of English uh, yes. and Ian was talking really of a head of departments amongst he other heads of departments yes. which and is sort of looking at the broadly, wood rather than the yes. trees and he said how much he values the way in which the English department is willing to take on new ideas and initiatives in mm. a sense it sets a tone which is emulated by other heads of departments who, who obviously mm. take on initiatives of their own. Yes. But it is a, a very useful input to the school yes. as a whole that there is a group, a department that is forward looking, willing to, to look at new ideas. Yes. And uh, Liz, the, your second in department, yes. echoes everything you've said about them working as a team and, and being happy she does. to do that. Mm. Good. And especially oh, values, nice. I think, the fact that there is clear delegation so that people do have particular responsibilities mm. which they carry out uh, and that's valued too. Mm. Oh, that's nice to know. Mm. Are there any ways, do you think, that you could be used to better advantage in the school or in your department? That I could be used? Mm. I don't know, really. No, I, d I, I mean, I've as I've said before, I enjoy teaching immensely. I, I'm not very keen on leaving the classroom. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm not looking for a, a post higher up or anything where I would, which would take me out of the classroom. Mm. Mm. Um, I enjoy doing what I do. A more difficult area, really. What aspects of your job haven't gone as well as you'd hoped? I don't know, really know whether it's more difficult, actually. I mean, I find saying things that I think have done well, uh, gone well, I, I find that quite difficult. Mm. <laughs> but with this, um, where I feel most guilty is that I can see my colleagues in the department preparing materials, putting them into the ca filing cabinets for general use, and for some reason, and I'm not quite sure what it is, it could be a question of time, um, that I don't make the same contribution. Yes. I mean, I have two thoughts about that. Um, first of all, that I think it would be unreasonable to expect you to make the same contribution, that your role Why in the department is. Mm. And, and I wonder if your colleagues don't actually value other things that you do more highly. I and mean, what I'm trying to say is there is only so much time. Now, if you put time into developing materials of that kind for classroom use. Mm. There are other areas where you would not be working, for instance, in your role as head of department, your yes, role of coordination. Um, um, and from what I've heard from your colleagues, that's something that they value very highly, that you are seen by them as a very, a very conscientious head of department, very mm. concerned for the department as a whole and mm. not for one particular aspect, the development of the resource base. Mm. Well, that's very nice to know, but um, I don't know that I... While, uh, while I can accept what you're saying, I don't think that I feel altogether easy about it. Mm. Mm. I, I still... Thinking in terms of the head and the senior staff in the school, is there anything more that you think we could do to support you in your job or a change in school organisation that you would find helpful? What I would like to see are occasions when we have meetings of the curriculum uh, 
uh, committee where we actually discuss philosophical issues rather than the urgent day-to-day -day things. I mean, um, yeah. I just feel that so often, because something is urgent, we deal with it, and it is important that we should, but occasionally we should say, right, now we're going to have a, a one-item agenda and we're going to talk about something in the long term. Let's look at where we're going. Rather, I suppose, as a, a self-review for the... For, for the school. Mm. I think the forum where that ought really to be raised is actually in the heads of departments meeting. Would you agree? Yes. That, that I can undertake to make sure that that is on the agenda mm. for one of our business meetings yes. to discuss the whole, the whole possibility yeah. of occasionally having these more reflective meetings where we're not just going through day-to-day -day business. It's something that I feel um, I personally would welcome. Can we move on then to the mm -hmm. idea of being quite specific about some targets over the next 12 months or so and keeping in mind that we have to be realistic, mm -hmm. that we are looking for something that can be attained yes. and that we can work towards an action plan on? Yes. Well, we have, of course, already mentioned feeder schools. Yes. I think that's, that's something that ought to come about. And that's something that we both need to work on, really. I mean, it would be a good way of helping development of my colleagues, mm. or a colleague, mm. doing something. Yes, and then, of course, there's the issue of my raising at the Heads of Department meeting. Yeah. A different kind of discussion. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Can I also put in something that came up in talking to Liz? Um, the matter of delegation within the department yes. and she, she said how much she valued it and she felt others valued having responsibility and I asked about the idea of rotating responsibilities mm. within the department and she thought that she would welcome that. It's true that Liz has now done the language for several years um, but of course literature is a new thing and mm. Tony has taken that. Mm. Yes I mean I'll go along with and that. It's they something can that might be rotate. raised yes. at a meeting. Yes, oh yes. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. And for yourself, your own personal targets. We've talked largely about departmental or whole school issues so far. Yeah. My targets. Mm. Well, first of all, I got to finish my dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> which is for next summer. I mean, that's my long-term, short-term aim. But what I would like to do, um, as I, I just don't want to move out of the classroom. I enjoy it too much. I just do not like the idea of writing timetables or looking after the, what to me uh, are almost little things of school, although if you asked the head, he would say it was anything but little. Um, I just prefer the teaching side of it. So I've no desire, I've no ambition, I've no long-term aims to move out of the classroom. But I suppose what I have enjoyed is doing some research and mm. research within the school, you know, of, of something or other. I mean, I don't want to take it on board at the moment because I'm too busy mm. with my own research. Mm. But I find that it's exciting. Mm. I find it's very interesting to do. And teachers are in a very good position to take on case studies mm -hmm. and by various means to follow through an idea and I rather like that, not that I want to publish it or anything like that, but just to do that sort of thing. Mm. With what purpose as far as your own development goes or as far as the improved learning of the children? Or the well I think I would, school? by carrying on some research of some sort whatever it might be. It might be into, you know, group discussion. I mean, you've mm. already raised a very interesting thing um, when you were talking about the lesson which you watched mm. and you said that the children's responses when I was present and when I was not with them. I, that could be a very mm. valuable thing to look into. Mm. Mm. Just, I mean, I, I'm just uh, speaking without really much thought behind it, but and as to how it could be accomplished, but I still think that mm. that would be worth would looking at. Would that be a value to colleagues within the department as well? Oh, I think so. We've touched on it, or you've mentioned it, 
your hopes and aspirations for your future. How, yes. do, you, how do you see your career developing from here? Well, I haven't much of a career left. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm nearly at retirement. Um, Never, Dennis. <laughs> yes, strange as it may seem. Are you content I mean, with that? Pardon? No, I'm content to be as I am, where I am, mm. but I'm not content to just pull down, you know, the manhole cover and say, I'm, I'm okay in my little sewer and I'll stay here. I mean, I want to be outward looking. I want to carry on broadening. Mm. I want to improve. Mm. Um, but I'm, I've no great desire to move away. I've yes. no great desire to move upward or out, uh, just outward myself. Mm. To con you know, I'm not content that the, that the department should remain as it is. Okay, mm. we, uh, we're going along very well at the moment, but if we were to suddenly stop going along, then we would stagnate. Yes. I don't want that. Yes. using these notes I'd like to draft an agreed statement yeah. and when we meet together next if we can work through the draft together with the targets which I'll put on there mm -hmm. and see if we can agree it and sign it and if I can remind you it will be the agreed statement together with the first page of your self-review which will actually yeah. be kept in school yes. be your property and the only people who will have access to it apart from yourself will be the head who will have signed it um, Ian as the deputy in charge of staffing mm. and um, our link with County Hall who will be able to look at it but will have to explain to you why he's looking at yes. it and, and won't be able to take it won't away. Won't be able to take it away. Yeah. No. It will essentially be <coughs> a property. chance to look at the draft statement, Dennis. Yes. How do you feel about it? Um, yes, I, li I like it. Uh, I've agreed with most things. There is just one little point I'm not mm. altogether happy about. Mm. And uh, it's the question of money and my yes. management of same. I'm not quite sure about the way you've worded it. Mm. I think what I'm trying to put across is the idea that as a head of department, I would see your responsibility to the whole school as well as to your department. Yes, I can see that. And that it is important that there should be responsible budgeting with every department. And it seems to me that at present you allow a deficit to accumulate. Carry it forward. Yes. But with more careful management you could actually have the books balancing from year to year. Yes, I could. But then if you look at the cost of books, uh, of novels and such like, cost goes up in leaps and bounds. If I have a, a brochure from a company now, mm. you can bet within three months the price will have risen. Mm. So do you not think it's better if I buy the books now, carry a deficit mm. on? I mean, nobody else is going to suffer mm. except my department in that we won't have as much money next year. Mm. Therefore, I don't think that I'm... I can't really agree with what you've written there. Mm. I, I, I think it's a little bit harsh. Well, I'd be prepared to rephrase that a little, but I think ultimately I would say that it would be an expectation that heads of department should manage their budgets so that a deficit was an unusual rather than a regular event. I'm happy to record your dissent from that if, if you want me to. I think I do really. Mm. I mean, I, I, there is no, I wouldn't like to guarantee that I would not go overdrawn next. Targets that we agreed. Yes, I'm, I'm happy with those, yeah, mm. and uh, also the timing of them, mm. yeah. Mm. I mean, I, I th it was just that one thing that I, I yes. wasn't altogether happy yes. about, you know. Yes. But uh, I like your style of writing, and you ought to teach English. You know? <laughs> I think that's a compliment coming from you, Dennis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what about the times? It, it occurs to me that most of the things we've pinpointed as targets Mm. Need action almost immediately. Is yes. is that going to be oh, I think all right that's from your possible. point of view? Yes. Mm. I mean, after all, when we think about it, um, they're not all. Some of it is yours, isn't yes. it? Yes. That you have to do. Yes. I mean, I could turn the question on you and say, is that are some of these things a little yes. too immediate? Yes. Yes. Well, now is the time to make the approaches. If anything further is yes. to happen yes, next I think year. So. 
Mm. And of course there are going to be follow-up sessions. Um, yeah. We have time to actually yes, and review get to get what's happened. Quite. So that if there are problems, for instance, about time remission for someone to liaise with primary yes, schools, we yeah. could perhaps get together and discuss that. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I shall go ahead, um, have this typed up, yeah. and we can sign it, and then yes. take it along to the head for his signature too. Before we go, I, can I just ask you one thing? Have you felt that you've enjoyed this? Have you, do you feel that you've learned anything by doing this? I mean, you've been looking at lessons uh, of mine, English, English isn't your subject. How do you feel about reviewing and I, being a reviewer? Mm, I've learned a lot. Um, people talk to each other a great deal in schools, but it tends to be at a fairly superficial level most of the time. Mm. And in the position that I am, having an understanding of what goes on in the school, it's very important. Mm -hmm. And I found that going in to lessons, seeing what happens there, talking in depth with people about what they feel the purpose of the job is mm -hmm. and how they would value it or judge it themselves, is made possible in a way that you can't over a cup of coffee in the staff room. Mm -hmm. So I feel I've got to know not only people better who work in the school, but how they view what they're doing better as well. Yes. Mm. And not just yourself, but the people no, I've no, talked others, to, yes. uh, to gather information. Mm. It's put the whole, it's, it's generated a debate at a more serious level. Yes. I think that's what I suppose it's getting down to the, my idea of having philosophical discussions. Yes, yes yeah. I mean, I, I'd go along with that, that point. I mean, I've enjoyed talking to you about it and talking to you about things that I don't normally talk to people about because there isn't the opportunity, there isn't the time and the, or the occasion on which to do it. Mm -hmm. And this uh, facilitates that. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree. Do you think that this whole process is going to benefit children? We've talked about ourselves and how I will hopefully benefit. Do you think it's going to benefit children? Yes, partly because we are creatures of habit and without realising it we tend to do more of the same from day to day, week to week, month to month. And having both the opportunity and the time to think constructively about what we're doing means that we can plan for better lessons, mm. think about whether we really want to be doing what we're doing the way we're doing it instead of just, as it were, tumbling from day to day, doing more of the same. It may be that on reflection we're happy, that, yes. that, that, that we feel we've got it right. Mm. But then again, I think there are occasions when we know in our mm. heart of hearts that there are things we could do differently that might mm. be beneficial. Yes. But after all, we talk about review and mm. development. Mm. Mm. And mm. one assumes development is going to be to the benefit of the children. You've been through the process from the reviewee side, and how, mm. how do you feel it benefits the children? It's made me more aware. I mean, just you coming into my lesson, looking at me, mm. and observing me, and the feedback from that in a constructive way, I think helps me to become, to improve, become better and helps me to improve.